Welcome back to the Top Notch Documentaries YouTube channel. Lake Crescent in Washington State holds many secrets. It is 600 feet deep and sits on the Olympic Peninsula. The lake is very popular with boaters and those wanting to do some fishing. However, despite holding plenty of visual beauty and serving as a great spot to spend the day, there is a hidden dark side to it. In this video, I go over a missing couple who vanished from Port Angeles in 1929. Their case was unsolved at the time and remained a mystery until answers came to light at Lake Crescent 75 years later. I hope you enjoy. A young married couple by the names of Russell and Blanche Warren resided at a logging camp on the Bogachiel River near Forks, Washington. Russell worked as a logger whilst Blanche was a stay-at-home mum caring for the couple's two young boys named Frank and Charles, who were aged 13 and 11 respectively. Life sounded pretty challenging given how the couple lived. They essentially lived off the land. Russell was 37 and Blanche was 34. Russell had rented the cabin by the Bogachiel River and he worked non-stop to support the family. He was originally from Wisconsin and had his family pack up and move to the Pacific Northwest in the mid-1920s probably in search of new opportunities in a new land. Blanche, being resigned to the small cabin, spent much of her time raising her children and doing typical household chores. She was by all accounts a devoted mother and had promised her two sons that they'd be celebrating the 4th of July. Blanche had become sick in the time just prior to going missing and had been in hospital at Port Angeles, but she looked forward to seeing her sons for the celebration. As mentioned, life would have been difficult given the times, but it doesn't sound like the family was necessarily struggling to make it. Russell had been making consistent car payments, had paid Blanche's hospital bill, and they'd just brought a washing machine. They sounded tight-knit and close, unlike many other families, and both parents were actively contributing to providing the best future for their sons. The mystery surrounding how this couple ended up being connected to Lake Crescent all began on July the 3rd of 1929. Blanche had just been let out of the Port Angeles Hospital at 3.30pm and Russell had shown to collect her in their 1927 Chevrolet. Leaving the hospital, the couple picked up a brand new Norg brand washing machine and Russell lifted it into the car. In order to get back to the cabin, they needed to drive around Lake Crescent and did just that. Unfortunately, they never returned to their cabin and whilst their sons waited, I can only imagine their worry as the hours turned to days and their parents never showed. The increasingly diminishing hope must have grew as upon learning about the missing persons cases, many local people believed that the couple had fled the area, abandoning their children as they may have looked at them as a burden. This didn't make any sense, given the planned 4th of July celebration, and the fact that the couple didn't have qualities often exhibited by those who just abruptly up and leave their kids. The reality was very different though, and many in the local area didn't know what to make of the couple's absence. The times were different back then, and people were much more nomadic than today, but that didn't really provide an adequate explanation as to where they had gone. Frank and Charles became orphans, and their parents' disappearances weren't really publicised until two weeks later. Israel Keys would have loved that scenario, and speaking of Israel Keys, I'm sure that this case was brought to his attention by the FBI. I'm sure that he'd already read up on it and that might be why he began dumping victims in lakes, one of which he claimed was in Lake Crescent, but that claim is unconfirmed and remains to be seen. Now let's get back to the story. The townsfolk were theorising even back then in 1929 and the case began to gain everyone's attention following the publication. Given the couple's actions on the day that they went missing, many didn't believe the abandonment theory, but with little to go on, the speculation remained. The theories grew even more outrageous as time moved on. Many believed that they'd been murdered and some believed that they'd been transported moonshine and had been taken out by gang members. Everything was unconfirmed but made for much drama and talk amongst the people. Meanwhile, whilst this case became the talk of the community surrounding Lake Crescent, the orphaned boys faced much misery in their lives. They'd been embraced by local tavern owners but were reportedly frantic with grief. The not knowing what happened to their guardians severely damaged them and this was made even worse by their school classmates. The classmates terrorised Frank and Charles, typical childish taunts about how their parents had ditched them and moved elsewhere. 
Six weeks following the couple last having been seen in Port Angeles and a man walking near to Lake Crescent saw some signs that indicated a car had travelled off the road and into the lake. The roads wouldn't have been ideal by today's standards and so back then any slip up could have proven fatal and a car could have easily veered off the road if it was doing some speed and crashed into a tree or in this case into the lake. Russell had told friends about falling asleep at the wheel given his non-stop work schedule. This may explain how the situation unfolded as the couple would have been driving along the Olympic Highway and this runs parallel to Lake Crescent. Guardrails exist now, but back in 1929, well, you get the picture. The years moved on and Frank and Charles never fully recovered from the mystery of their parents' sudden disappearances. They moved about with different family members following being taken in by the tavern owners and Frank eventually became an alcoholic dying of this disease at age 57. Charles suffered for the rest of his life as well. The questions remained for Charles, who wanted to know theories and get to the bottom of the case. Unfortunately, he never got his answer. In a tragic play of events, Charles went missing at sea whilst fishing. He was 47. It wouldn't be until the new millennium that the mystery surrounding the Warrens' disappearances started to come to light, given cases associated with the lake in the years in between. The lake was now more well known when it came to accidental drowning deaths and accidents in general. The lake didn't enjoy giving up its secrets and for a long time the Warrens car remained undiscovered at the western point of Lake Crescent, an area which now goes by the name Ambulance Point. Beginning in 2001, objects and belongings associated with the Warrens began to rise to the lake's surface. Parts of their 1927 Chevrolet were recovered and their washing machine was recovered. It could have been a random person who had dumped it, but this would be disproven when it would turn out to have been manufactured in the 1920s. The year 2002 would be the year that the car was officially located. The underwater car is seen pictured in the cold water, laying undisturbed and I have to say that it's relatively peaceful looking given the sad events that led up to it being found there. Bones would be linked to the couple following this discovery a few years later in 2004. All of these search expeditions had actually been done by volunteers by the way, so salute to them. The bones were close to the Chevrolet and descendants of Russell and Blanche expressed their gratitude that the mystery had finally been solved. A relative said, It makes a difference knowing what happens. Now we know where they are. It's a beautiful lake. We can think of that lake being Russell and Blanche's home forever and that makes me feel real happy. It's a shame that Frank and Charles never got to see the underwater searches and ultimate discoveries but sometimes that's just how life plays out. Many of these cases take time and unless the technology is there much of this stuff won't ever be solved. The underwater site has now become a spot where many go to dive, with a permit of course. I think it's a good idea that nobody tried excavating the Warrens Chevrolet. It's now a part of the history of Lake Crescent and as the relatives mentioned it's a beautiful lake. And that wraps up the mystery of the Warren couple's disappearances and takes me back to Israel Keys. If he has indeed got a victim submerged somewhere in Lake Crescent, then I'm guessing that it will only be a matter of time before a family could receive some answers. Technology is rapidly improving, and underwater technology and advancements are going to help out loved ones of relatives of missing people, much like in the Warren case. This has been the Lake Crescent mystery of Russell and Blanche Warren. As always, thank you for watching.